Hello YouTube, welcome to our channel. My name is Aditya and in today's video, we are going to take a look at Vagrant boxes. I hope you have seen my last video on introduction to Vagrant. If you have not seen that, I recommend you go there and check it out. So let's begin with Vagrant boxes. Just to clear your doubt, you must be having a question, what are Vagrant boxes? So just a simple definition, Vagrant boxes are basically some pre-installed virtual machines with some specific settings. A lot of users provide you with different Vagrant boxes. So we are at the site app.vagrantup.com, the official Vagrant provider and uh, a lot of users have uploaded their own Vagrant boxes. So the first name is the username and then the box name and then each box has a provider like CentOS 7 has a provider for Hyper-V, LibWord, VirtualBox and VMware meaning that you can download a CentOS 7 box and use it on VirtualBox or you could use it on VMware. There are a lot of providers and you can choose any of these depending on what boxes are provided and if you are not happy with the boxes from this official site you can also create your own boxes. I'm going to create a separate detailed tutorial on how to create your own Vagrant box. If you want to download this Vagrant box in, onto your machine you have to use the vagrant box add command. This is the first command that you are going to learn. Let's say like uh, if you want to check out some help with vagrant boxes, you can go type vagrant box dash h and that will list out all the sub commands for vagrant box. So the first command is vagrant box add which is used to download a vagrant box and we are going to download a small box for the sake of this tutorial it's called tiny core micro it's hardly around like 12 mb and it's provided by uh, allbat user in order to download this box you have to just type vagrant box add and then the username which is allbat slash and the name of the box which is tiny core micro it should start downloading the box Sometimes these boxes are very large in size. It could go almost up to like 200 to 300 MB and may take some time. But once you have this box, you can reuse it multiple times. So this box is just around like 12 MB and it should complete within like few seconds. And if you're not happy with the boxes on the HashiCorp site, you can also go to vagrantbox.es and download boxes from here. They provide boxes in order to download these boxes from a different site you have to copy this URL. So let's try and download the free BSD minimal version. Let's copy this. And once this is copied, you can type vagrant box add and then you can name the box uh, whatever you want. So I'll name it free BSD 8.4 and then you have to paste the URL. This should download you that box. So this goes for virtual box. But let's say like you have to or you want to download different providers. So the default provider is usually VirtualBox. But let's you want to download a box for let's say VMware. So what you have to do is just provide a flag called provider and which goes this way. I'll create a quick tab and the command is vagrant box add dash dash provider equal to and right now the default provider is virtual box but let's say you want to download a box for VMware so you can provide VMware as the provider and let's say CentOS 7 is available for VMware so you can type CentOS which is the name of the user and then the name of the box which is 7 and this will add this box to your machine so let's go back to screen number one I'll pause this video for a few minutes and let's come back when this box is downloaded completely. So guys, both the boxes are downloaded and to check out what boxes you have on your machine, you can use the vagrant box list command, which is... So this command will list all the boxes that are downloaded on your machine. So I have some pre-downloaded boxes and we downloaded this from the URL and the all bad tiny micro core from the uh, official HashiCorp site. So vagrant box list was the second command that we learned today. The next command is vagrant box outdated. So you can use this command to check all the boxes that are outdated, meaning that let's say you downloaded Debian Jesse 64 like about a month ago and some patches came up for these boxes so the users will update their boxes 
and then roll out on their website and uh, when you issue this command it will go to the website and check if the version of this box has changed so this outdated command will go and check and let you know if there is an update available for the box this may be helpful if you are using or deploying boxes in production though i don't recommend it else i think you can uh, easily work with the already existing boxes if you are just using it for quick testing and disposal and if you issue a global flag it will check all the boxes that you have on your machine without the global flag it will just check whichever box is present in the vagrant file which we will come to in the next few minutes so it is checking and ubuntu trusty 64 is up to date but it says that Scotchbox is outdated. The current version which we have is version 2.5 and the latest version is 3.0. The one which we downloaded from URL doesn't have any versioning info. So boxes downloaded from URL or different sources other than the official HashiCorp site have to be updated manually. So the command has done checking all the boxes. Let's quickly check out the next command which is vagrant box update and this will update your boxes. So if you want to update a specific box, uh, vagrant box update by the way will update only the box which is present in your current vagrant file. But if you issue a dash dash box flag then you can specify which box you want to update. So let's quickly take and update the Debian Jesse 64 box. So the update has begun. It will download the entire box. So you'll have to bear with the speed of your internet. So let the update continue. We'll move on to the next uh, command. So first we list the boxes. So once you update a box, uh, there will be two different versions of the same box available on your machine. And if you don't want the older version, you can just prune it. So in order to remove the all the older versions of uh, any box that you have downloaded, you can use the vagrant box prune command, which is vagrant box prune. And if you provide a dash and flag, the vagrant box prune command will just do a dry run and it will not delete the older versions of boxes. So if you would have run vagrant box prune, it would have removed this Ubuntu trusty 64 version ending 9 to 6, which is this one, since we have the newer version with us. So this was a dry run. So if we run vagrant prune, it has now removed the older version. And now if we check, vagrant box list the older version of ubuntu trusty 64 is gone the next command is vagrant box remove so let's say you don't want a box anymore what you can do is just issue vagrant box remove and then the name of the box you want to remove so let's say we want to remove the scotch box scotch So this has removed the uh, scotch box. The next and the final command is vagrant box repackage. Clear the screen. So let's list all the boxes again. Vagrant box list. So the vagrant box repackage command takes three arguments which are the name of the box that could be all batch slash tiny dash go dash micro. Then the provider of the box, which is virtual box, and then the version of the box, which is 0 0.1.0. .0. So what does repackage exactly mean? Let's put this box on repackaging and I'll explain you what repackaging does. So if you remember a few minutes ago, I told you guys that when we download vagrant boxes through a URL, they have some extension called dot box. So when you download this box to your machine, this box is downloaded and then scrapped and kept inside a folder inside your home directory. So let's go inside that directory vagrant.d slash boxes and here you will find all the downloaded boxes that you have in your machine so if you dig further in 
let's go into the all bad box you will see some metadata and the version so digging in into the version you will see virtual box which is the provider and then you'll find the OVF which is the default extension for VirtualBox exported machines and a VMDK hard disk of that VirtualBox. So this is the extracted version of that doc box package. So now if you go back to the folder where we repackaged the box, what it does is it will take all these files and the metadata URL and package it into a file called package.box you can just rename it anything so let's say like microbox so now you can share this package or microbox with anyone else you can just upload it onto any site and then they can use the vagrant box add command and then let's say like micro is the name and then the url that you provide for this box and they can have that box on their machine. So this simplifies sharing of Vagrant boxes. So coming back to the update command, the box has finished updating Debian Jesse 64 from version 8.8.1 to 8.9.0. And now if we check Vagrant box list, it should show us the old version as well as the new version of Debian box. Just a quick recap of what all commands we saw vagrant box dash h we saw the seven commands vagrant add to add the box to your or uh, download the box to your machine vagrant box list to list all the boxes vagrant box outdated to check if your box is outdated prone to remove the older versions of the box remove to remove the any version of box repackage to create a dot box extension file which you can share with others and vagrant box update to update the current box on your machine just a quick tip before leaving if you cancel the vagrant box add command in between it is downloading the box it may create some complications so you can use the vagrant box clean to clear any temporary downloaded files and vagrant box add space dash dash force to overwrite an existing box so guys these are all the boxes that we have on our machine. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at some parts of the Vagrant file and create a Vagrant machine.